Hi guys. Welcome to Universe View Odyssey channel. Heisenberg's question about the Bohr model and matrix mechanics, Quantum Odyssey 8. The seed of quantum theory, quantum mechanics, which began with Planck's energy quantum in 1900, gradually emerged as Bohr applied it to the atomic model following Einstein's light quantum hypothesis. The research to identify the identity and mechanism of the spectrum emitted by atoms has resulted in the birth of the bohr sommerfeld atomic model. However, an important yet unresolved problem was the intensity of the spectrum. Of course, the problem of when and where electrons transition, jump, in a specific orbit was still unresolved. The bohr kramers slater BKS, theory considered atoms as virtual harmonic oscillators and tried to harmonize them with classical mechanics, but failed. The fundamental reason for the failure of the BKS theory is that the spectrum emitted by atoms is treated as a wave rather than a light quantum. Werner Heisenberg was both confused and interested in Bohr's atomic theory, which he had learned from Professor Sommerfeld at the University of Munich. Bohr's quantum condition drew intellectual interest, reminding us of Pythagoras' mystery of numbers. However, the concept of a fixed electron orbit that does not emit light and the concept of quantum jump of electrons was not understood at all. Heisenberg had many discussions about this with his friend Wolfgang Pauli. One day, Pauli asked Heisenberg cynically, do you believe that there are electron orbits in atoms? Heisenberg also had doubts about this, so he replied, the Bohr theory is full of doubts. This is because the orbital radius is calculated according to classical mechanics while granting electron orbits in a stationary state by putting forward quantum conditions outside the scope of classical mechanics. They claim that light is emitted when electrons transition from one orbit to another, but they are silent about this bizarre electron jumping, transition, process. I have no idea exactly what Bohr's representation of an electron's orbit is. Pauli agreed with him. If an electron's orbit is in an atom, it must revolve periodically with an apparently constant frequency. Then, according to Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, it can be concluded that electrical oscillations occur from periodically moving charges, and monochromatic light having the frequency is emitted. However, the frequency of the rays emitted from the Bohr model is said to be in the middle of the frequency before and after the mysterious transition. It sounds like a lunatic. Heisenberg and Pauli had the opportunity to meet Bohr, the founder of the atomic theory, who stimulated curiosity and doubt at the same time. In 1922, at the recommendation of Professor Sommerfeld, they participated in the Bohr special lecture held at the University of Göttingen. Heisenberg raised a counterargument to Bohr after the lecture, and Bohr did not give a clear answer. After the discussion, Bohr suggested Heisenberg take a walk on Mount Heinberg. The walk on this day had a great influence on Heisenberg's academic journey. Referring to the morning's lecture and discussion, Bohr said, The starting point of my theory is the stability of matter, which from the point of view of classical physics can only be said to be amazing. Bohr continued, According to the principle of classical physics, that is, causal determinism, the current state must be clearly determined by the immediately preceding state, but the phenomenon in the atom does not correspond to this. Early on this contradiction plagued me. Bohr continued talking. Until now, scientists have been able to use existing concepts and laws to explain new phenomena. But in atomic physics, I realize that the concepts and laws we know so far are never enough. Classical physics cannot be applied inside atoms. Therefore, an intuitive description of the atomic structure is also impossible. This is because the fact that it should be intuitive is already a concept in classical physics. Bohr's words contained the critical mind Heisenberg had. Heisenberg asked again to make sure he understood correctly. Then, what on earth does the atomic model you have been explaining in your lectures over the past few days mean? Bohr replied. It can be said that the model of the atom is certainly empirical or speculative. It is not obtained by theoretical reasoning. I hope my atomic model can describe the structure of an atom well, but I only hope that it is well described within the range that is possible with the intuitive language of classical physics. Heisenberg asked again, how can we make scientific progress if we rely on conjecture rather than theoretical reasoning? Bohr then replied, you might expect that over time, new experiences will form new concepts that can explain non-intuitive phenomena in atoms. Unfortunately, however, it cannot be denied that we are still far from such a situation. Heisenberg asked as if questioning again, 
If the internal structure of the atom, as you say, is inaccessible to such intuitive descriptions, and if we have no language to speak of this structure, when can we ever understand atoms? Bohr hesitated for a moment, then replied, no, don't be so pessimistic. We are currently unraveling the mystery of the atom, and in the process we will learn the true meaning of the word, understanding. After Heisenberg's conversation with Bohr, he clearly recognized that it was an undeniable fact that his theory, although not complete, contained considerable truth. His theory explained the stability of atoms and accurately predicted the frequencies of the radiation spectrum. However, physicists including Heisenberg had the following question. Why doesn't the frequency of the orbital motion of electrons in an atom appear as the frequency of the emitted radiation? Does that mean there is no orbital motion? If the hypothesis of orbital motion is not correct, does that mean that electrons do not move in atoms? But can't we see electrons in motion through Wilson's cold chamber? Heisenberg noted that there is a definite difference between the electron frequency of an electron orbit in an atom and the frequency of the emitted light. This, he concluded, was because the concept of an electron orbit was inappropriate. In fact, since Bohr's theory first came out, there were many questions about electron orbits. Heisenberg, who started research with Bohr in Copenhagen, Denmark in July 1924, began research to establish a formula for the intensity of the hydrogen atom spectral lines from the summer of the following year. At first, he fell into a mathematical maze that was too complex and failed. However, from this attempt, he was convinced that there was no need to assume electron orbits in atoms, and that the quantity, amplitude, that determines the frequency and intensity of spectral lines could be used as a substitute for orbits. This is because atomic orbitals are assumed concepts, whereas these physical quantities can be directly observed. Heisenberg believed that only observable quantities should be considered as determinants of atoms, following the positivist scientific methodology that dominated European science at the time. In particular, he treated radiation emitted from atoms as light quanta, which are particles according to Einstein's light quantum hypothesis. It is a different approach from Bohr, who refused to accept the light quantum concept. Based on this idea, Heisenberg set out to find a mathematically simpler mechanical system. As such a system, he came up with a vibrating pendulum, a so-called harmonic oscillator, which appears as a vibration model in atoms or molecules in atomic physics. He regarded the atom as Einstein's light quantum and at the same time borrowed the atom equals virtual harmonic oscillator hypothesis of the BKS theory. He also established a theory based on observable physical quantities, such as the frequency and intensity of radiation, in the manner of classical mechanics, ignoring the location of electrons, electron orbits. Heisenberg took the approach of abandoning the concept of electron orbit. This is based on the physical intuition that electron orbits can be described by the frequency and intensity of the spectrum. The radiation corresponds to what mathematicians call the Fourier series for electron orbits. Thus, the idea came that the laws of mechanics should be described not as equations for the position or velocity of electrons, but as equations for the frequencies or amplitudes of the Fourier series. Blessings on the island of Helgoland. In July 1925, Heisenberg fell ill with hay fever, a type of pollen allergy. He took a two-week vacation to recuperate on the North Sea island of Helgoland, Heligoland. In a pleasant environment, Heisenberg succeeded in his mathematical formulation of the intensity of the lines of the atomic spectrum in just a few days. Subsequently, he formulated the expression of a series of energy levels, which, unlike classical physics, appeared in quantized form. Finally, Heisenberg established a system of quantum mechanics that is mathematically consistent and complete. The mathematics Heisenberg used at this time was a matrix that was not commonly used by physicists at the time. Matrices act as operators that transform functions, and physically, they function to derive observations like the operators of the Schrödinger wave equation. Heisenberg did not initially know that his mathematical technique was a matrix. Marx born of the University of Göttingen discovered that Heisenberg's mathematical description was a matrix and further refined it. So Heisenberg's mathematical description of quantum is called matrix mechanics. Heisenberg's matrix mechanics was established on the basis of the frequency and amplitude, intensity, of radiation, ignoring the electron's orbit, position. Nevertheless, 
the equation of motion of matrix mechanics satisfies both the law of conservation of energy and Bohr's frequency condition. In classical mechanics, both the equations of motion and kinetic energy appear in differential form with respect to the position of the object. Therefore, the energy calculated by substituting the quantity, not the position, cannot be said to be the same as the known energy. However, Heisenberg thought that there was no reason why the energy derived from the equation of motion of matrix mechanics could not be called energy because the energy conservation law was satisfied and there was no contradiction with Bohr's frequency relationship. In addition, the language of classical mechanics could be used in quantum mechanics as it is. I can't help but say that this is a surprising result. Matrix mechanics could replace Newtonian mechanics by rediscovering new facts such as the hydrogen atom problem while satisfying all the conditions of Newtonian mechanics. In particular, Born, Pascal Jordan, and Paul Dirac, who developed matrix mechanics, showed that the matrices describing the position and momentum of electrons are not commutable. PQ does not equal QP. This clearly showed the essential difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics in mathematical language. Reference mark the dialogue in this text refers to Heisenberg's book Open Hollow Corner Bracket Der Teil und Ganze. Guess break im Umkreis der Tomphysik close hollow corner bracket. Thanks for watching.